I wanted to name my talk today uh, secrets, but they are mostly secrets because I was so shocked by all the material that I found in the archives uh, in the basement of this building. So it was uh, not that there are so much secrets, but it was such a surprise to, to find so much incredible information about my dad's work. Uh, so some of the things that I will be talking about might have been secrets to me, but some of them are secrets that my father did tell me, not only ones that he didn't tell me. So. Um, one that you may not know was that he, uh, he was a, a man of many talents. He uh, uh, played uh, every instrument in, apparently in the school band, uh, but that was one thing he, joy he, he enjoyed. Uh, so this is, um, again, thank you to Piret and Jarmo and Lani, who was helping me uh, in the basement of the archives here in, uh, in, in the building. It's, I set myself up a little office, and I'm actually going to be continuing to work there on, on my father's archives. So there's, there's absolutely a ton of stuff there, and I'm very thankful that this, this whole corridor is, uh, is, is his stuff on the right. And there's Lonnie helping me put my uh, PowerPoint presentation together. Uh, so the story begins when they arrived in Halifax on uh, Pier 21, as uh, so many Estonians did. And that's my parents on the right there. I, I couldn't find a, a photograph that was taken of them on the ship, but uh, that was uh, just before, uh, during the war. Uh, probably in Estonia, so it's, I think it's about four or five years too early, but at least it shows them as, as young people uh, and very happy. And uh, the, the first uh, secret uh, that, that I'd be revealing is that my parents said that they had bought first-class tickets from Stockholm, so somebody was able to sell them first-class first tickets to Toronto, um, and uh, the, the ship was definitely first-class, but they complained that the train wasn't uh, that it was third class, but the, what, what I guess they didn't know is that there were so many tens of thousands of immigrants coming to Canada that the, the, the train was the same for everybody. So, <laughs> But uh, what paid the way was that my father um, sold his uh, silversmith business. Uh, so that was how he was able to buy the ticket uh, to Canada. So, and uh, my Dear darling wife, Carol is wearing uh, the two chains that we have uh, that my father made by hand. So if you want to see them more closely, you can see them on her. Um, and the, uh, also a, a secret that I, I did know, but I, I guess I didn't quite appreciate to the same extent as when I saw these paintings again in the basement is that my father was already painting um, watercolors in Estonia. So these were certainly things that influenced his, his work, was uh, all his uh, artistic expression. Uh, he came to Canada, and uh, Jarmo reminded me of a story that actually Michael Bach uh, told my dad to include his uh, watercolors uh, when he was applying for architecture school. Uh, so uh, that, that was interesting, but he made it in. Um, it, it's interesting that this yearbook from 1953, uh, they had fun with uh, the photographs. They gave my dad a black eye um, and we're very happy to have with us today Jerry Markson, um, who was my father's classmate. Oops. Um, let me see how to use this. There's, there's Jerry. Um, Jerry, did they do anything to your face? No. Well, I, I, how come? I, I don't know. <laughs> so uh, I, I also think that maybe somebody uh, cut off the P in, in, in proof on purpose on my dad. So it says roof only. Um, but that was, uh, that's my dad and his partner, John Wells. And... Uh, I don't know, Jerry, I think that the, the fact that they were at the top maybe has some significance. I think they did very well in their uh, schooling. Uh, and um, some other interesting people there is uh, Ivar Kalmar, 
Uh, Ivar Kalmar was in the same class. You can see him there. Uh, and uh, Julian Rutherford was our, our, neighbor, our neighbor on the island. And uh, Harry Burston was also my father's uh, partner as well in the beginning years. And that's my father's uh, Scarborough uh, Olympic Stadium project for his, his fifth year. Uh, and then this is just showing how uh, he was, um, he, I think he was well liked by his uh, fellow uh, students and liked to uh, kid around a little bit. So he's, he's in the middle there. Uh, and he was doing beautiful paintings that I think already have some architectural, uh, show, show some architectural interest. Uh, and again, some more of his, his paintings. Uh, and then you can begin to see some of his uh, rendering style as well. The, he, I think he, he must have had a, a, a way with women because he's always got these pictures where um, something's going on. Uh, and, and here he's designed the Young Women's Christian Association, the YWCA residence on Woodlawn, which later somebody else designed there, but that is actually where he lived. So he knew about the project coming up, I, I guess. Um, and uh, then his graduation picture, he's actually got an extra wife, which I, uh, my mother doesn't look particularly happy with this uh, <laughs> tag-along woman that's uh, standing there beside my dad as well. <laughs> Uh, when my dad got out of university, he uh, was recruited by uh, Parkin, and um, we're so lucky that this picture exists of the uh, Parkin factory uh, with my dad right in the front row. Um, so that's unmistakably my, my father because I recognize the hairline, and I know that he sat in the front row, uh, and that is the uh, office building uh, that, you know, it, it doesn't look like an architect's office. <laughs> but that was an architect's office at the corner of York Mills and Don Mills where, where the architecture was produced. And this was one of the uh, most famous buildings that my dad uh, had a hand in, the or orthopharmaceutical building in, in Don Mills at the time. Um, what I, I want to show as well, though, is some of the smaller projects uh, because they're interesting to me, uh, his, his residential projects and so on. The, the, our, our cottage, our first cottage was actually featured in Canadian homes. And um, sometimes this magazine has been, uh, issue has been lost and then it's been found again. So it's always been um, a nice thing to have and it's in the, it's in the archives in the basement as well. Um, so it's an interesting story to read, and if, if anybody's interested, I can show them um, later on. But one of the quotes from here is, uh, from my dad, is, don't put up a postage stamp. Let your deck be big. The bigger, the better. Uh, and indeed, our, our deck at the first cottage was, was, was bigger than our, um, was, was bigger than the cottage itself, and that's where, uh, where, where life went on. And uh, it, it led to uh, the cottage that we have now, where uh, the, the deck is huge. And uh, it's, it creates ongoing work for us, uh, fixing it uh, constantly. Uh, so there's the cottage from, from the back. Uh, it's interesting that it's a, um, a bit of a village. And each room has... Um, a view of the lake because we're, we're, we're on a point. And it's fabulous because we share that cottage with my sister and uh, my sister's family. And I don't think that we'd be able to survive if it hadn't been for the fact that everybody has their own space so that we're, uh, and the, and the uh, voices don't carry uh, through, the, through the walls because it's, it's outside. Um, and my father always mentioned that it was uh, inspired by uh, Asplund's uh, crematorium uh, roofs and columns. 
and this is how it was built. Um, so it's really been with us. Uh, Jarmo was asking me what year this was when we added the, the, the sauna. So we added the sauna in 2006. So that was really, it's been 40 years that it's been uh, evolving. And um, who knows what the next uh, addition is going to be. But the, uh, in, in 66, it was just the first two units. And this is now the, the view from, from the fireplace room looking out. And what is uh, absolutely incredible about this is when you sit in the living room, how you feel that you're actually outside. So that even though you're inside, you actually feel like you're sitting amongst the trees. Part of it has to do with the beautiful uh, clear cedar ceiling. And uh, the, the chairs in there in the living room are, are Michael Stewart and Jack Diamond designed those chairs for uh, Expo 67. And there's the view looking back into the fireplace. And uh, of course, I renovated the kitchen. So that's the, uh, the kitchen renovation. But, uh, and there's the, the deck that we've been renovating this year. So my dad had this incredibly neat idea of making the, the, the design of the deck like a tray so that once you started going up the slopey sides, you knew that you better not go any further because that would be uh, the signal that you were about to fall off. Uh, so there's, there's no railing, but it, it, the, the sides all slope up. Um, so there's, the, there's Jan, uh, my brother-in-law, working on renovating the deck. We've got to finish now, by the way, just about, almost finished. And that's in, in the other direction, and there's my son Mick um, doing some screwing, uh, which was, he, was, he was best at that, so that was his job. And there, um, just as a, as a last note, is um, the bathroom, or one of the bathrooms in the cottage arriving from uh, Habitat from Expo 67. So we have um, an, a, an, a, from Moisha Safdi's uh, prefab uh, fiberglass bathroom in the cottage as well. Um, this is another, this is very interesting that I found was this, uh, these prefab cottages that my father was into designing in um, the late 50s. And uh, he's got a typical smaller unit and a typical larger unit there. And I never knew about this drawing. So this was, I guess, a secret that my father never told me. Um, and um, this led to, he was actually able to try this out. So this is Malek Erson's cottage so Hans Gerson, Hans and Stella Gerson uh, uh, commissioned my dad to do their cottage. This was built in 1958, and it looks that's this is these are recent pictures, so it, it still exists like this. It's a, pretty incredible. Um, and uh, my dad also did the sauna, which is really neat too, because it's a log sauna. And I've always loved, I always wanted to do a modern log building, and my dad got to do one. So what? What else is new? Um, and and th so there were many interesting uh, small projects that he did. Um, this is the Andre residence in um, Hogs Hollow. Um, it's just been sold, and I understand that they're actually going to renovate the building, so it's nice instead of demolishing it. Um, so this is 45 Danino in North York. And this is uh, 54 Sandfield. So they're just beautiful examples of uh, mid-century modern houses. Uh, this was um, Dr. Vent's residence uh, backing onto Wilkett Creek Park. Uh, then my father left um, my father left Parkin for one dollar more an hour. Because uh, the one dollar more an hour was a lot of money in those days. So uh, he went to H.K. Ferguson. He was also able to be the chief architect uh, by doing that. So he was the chief architect for Canada for parking garages. And uh, this is the Nathan Phillips Square parking garage, which was his first project. And Yarmo again reminded me <laughs> that uh, my father said that he was lucky that his first project uh, first corporate big project that he did is nobody can see it because it's underground. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I always think about that whenever I park in, uh, 
in the underground parking. That, that's, my dad did that. Um, so this, I, I, this was another one of those incredible things that I found in the, in the archives, and I'm so thankful to the archives being there. Um, and if I may read to you, although formed only six weeks ago, the Toronto firm of architects Elmar Tampold Associates, 51 Young Street, is securing a reputation for original and varied ideas. Already they have prepared sketches or plans for projects totaling $12 million and the details of the first of these working plans for a marina on Georgian Bay appear separately in these columns. Besides this job, the new firm is also preparing sketches for a $3 million hotel and working plans for a $5 million multi-story office block to be erected in Toronto. The pride of the office, however, is a plan for a prefab house which can be fabricated with a minimum of labor and cost and the design of which can be altered by the owner at will. Details will be, will be released soon. Uh, Elmar Tampold is one of several Estonian architects now practicing in Toronto and is assisted by a Scot and an Englishman. <laughs> so <laughs> anyways, I, I'm glad that you see the humor in that. I think it's hilarious. Um, I don't know Oh, how a, somebody thought that Harry Burston was a Scot. <laughs> I, I can't imagine what that was, but obviously um, John Wells was the Englishman. And I, I sorry, I forgot to mention that uh, sadly John Wells passed away this uh, summer. So in July, his partner uh, passed away at the age of 89. Uh, there is something... There is somewhere a building permit that was taken out for one of these marinas. I don't know if it was ever built. Um, the design that I see there is, is actually quite derivative. It, it reminds me of, I think, Stratford Theatre or something like that. So, it, but, it, but it's very interesting that, uh, that the beginning of uh, Tampled Wells or Burston Wells and Tampled or whichever uh, was was in the newspaper like that. I think it's uh, it's hilarious, um, and and that he came onto the scene with uh, with a bang like that. Uh, so this is one of his very first projects um, as uh, Tampold Wells, and um, it's I, it's almost my favorite. I think I really really love this building. It was um, the Citadel Inn, and I don't know how many people you know went to Halifax and stayed at the Citadel Inn because it was a very popular hotel. Um, it's very, the, the design is quite Breuer-esque that, uh, that he designed. And this is my dad's um, original rendering for the hotel. Um, maybe by the time it was demolished, it wasn't such a bad idea because uh, it had so many things done to it uh, to make it able to accommodate more and more and more tourists in Halifax that uh, you couldn't really see the original building anymore. Um, and. I don't know who did this great single line drawing at the bottom here, but that's uh, the original is down in the basement too. I love that drawing. Um, then I guess one of the secrets, of the, one of the biggest secrets to me was that he did so much work in Halifax, just tons and tons of work in Halifax. And it isn't the subject of this uh, symposium. So I'll just quickly go through these. Um, but uh, you know, in terms of returning to the place where he, uh, <laughs> emigrated to Canada was kind of neat. So this is the, a model of the Centennial Building for Centennial Developments and the photograph of the uh, completed building. Uh, some pictures, a picture off Google Street View of the Centennial Building and then the, another office building on the right here. Um, and that has been converted to a hotel now. So that's the Hollis. If you want to stay in a Tampled Wells building, you can stay at the Hollis. Uh, and there they are of you from, from the distance. Uh, and another building that was important uh, in the 60s that uh, my father did was the Halifax Insurance Building. And uh, every building had to have a rendering, every building had to have a model, and, and, and the final building. Uh, and um, it was nice because I, by going into the basement here, I've finally figured out how I can recognize my father's renderings uh, is by the square cars. 
So he would draw these very square cars for some reason. And uh, <laughs> uh, if, if, it, if it didn't have a, a signature, a lot of the renderings do have signatures, but if they didn't, I, I'd try to figure it out from the cars. Uh, this just, I don't know where these buildings were supposed to be. I think the one on the left is probably an earlier version of 120 Eddington East, uh, may, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I don't think this building was ever built, but I mean, these were huge drawings. Uh, and uh, it's incredible the, how carefully, how carefully they were drawn. And you see the, the handiwork and these ones luckily are signed with the, and, but they happen to have square cars too. Uh, th this is just showing another important government building in, in Halifax that, that he did. Um, and then another building where the rendering, I think, is much nicer than the actual building. Um, but the building's okay. And then uh, today, what the building looks like on the left, and the rendering is, is much nicer. Um, he also did the largest, at the time, was the largest apartment building in Canada. I think it was pretty quickly eclipsed, but it was at the time, according to the developer, Ralph Metchuk, uh, who I spoke to on the phone, it was at the time the largest, uh, some 480 um, suites. It's called the uh, Park Victoria building in, uh, in Halifax, and it's, people live very happily in it. Um, there's the, uh, the model of the building. Actually reminds me a bit of the, the building on Collier Street um, that somebody designed, I can't remember. Um, at least the end view. And this is uh, the Embassy Towers which they won a design award on uh, Spring Garden Road in Halifax. Uh, um, and this is actually the building that uh, Henno, uh, Henno Celasti lived in when he ran the Halifax office. So him and uh, Maya lived there. Another view, this is a, a recent view and I, I wanted to uh, take a, a detail of the font for Deep to appreciate uh, the, I, I loved how they, they used such uh, distinctive 60s uh, fonts uh, on all their buildings. Uh, and then, it, you know, it just goes on and on and on. And, and, you know, when I go through the project list, I can actually Google and street view some of his projects. And this is um, uh, St. John's. This is a very important square in St. John. New Brunswick, where there, again there's two two office buildings next to each other, and this is the the Brunswick House with the uh, Canadian flag that uh, Elmar did with uh, Tampold Wells. Um, the other thing that my dad never told me is my dad never told me that for every uh, St. Mary's University football game, for every home game that's televised on TV, you see uh, their uh, St. Mary's. University student residents in the background, and uh, if they play the game in the afternoon, then the shadows don't go on the field, which is good. And and it's interesting that the tower on the right uh, is a pretty obvious precursor to um, to Rochdale, I would say, in terms of the floor plan. Uh, and there is um, the RAIC journal article with uh, Henno Silaste as the associate architect. And uh, so I, I, I don't exactly remember um, whether that Henno was beginning his, starting his own firm and was uh, beginning to uh, make a name for himself uh, at that time. Uh, this is another one of my father's renderings. This was uh, the Hammerskjöld, I don't know how to pronounce that, um, residents in Waterloo at Waterloo University. I think this is one of the nicest projects uh, in terms of the design. A very, it's kind of Alto-esque, but I, I like the design of that building and um, and then how it looks today. It's been reclad. I think it's a pretty good job of recladding it. I was always, I'm always interested as in how these buildings continue to be used and 
uh, that they're still occupied today. This was um, another residence in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So these were all um, late 60s, early 70s, uh, these buildings. So this is Ann Arbor, Michigan, as they got to do that project in the United States too. Um, and this is the married student residence that it has become part of our urban fabric um, that we know quite well at uh, behind the Manny Life building at uh, Charles and Balmuto and streets. And Tartu College, I think one of the nicest heroic, uh, I, I, don't, I don't consider it brutalist. I know that it's supposed to be brutalist, but I don't think of it being particularly brutal. So <laughs> I think it's, it's actually quite a humane building. The other thing is that it's so well looked after uh, that it has stayed uh, looking fresh, uh, which is a testament to um, our community for looking after this building so well, whereas uh, Rochdale, I don't think, has stood the test of time as well as, uh, as Tartu has. There's Rochdale College. Uh, this is a, a, another little gem on Cecil Street, which is the uh, United Steelworkers of America building that I, I like very much I, and I love looking at the rendering. I love seeing those those narrow vertical windows and how that harkens back to some of his original you know Citadel Inn work and you see the, the continuity there the design the way the windows step around the corner sort of like Altos uh, Otaniemi uh, student residences. This is, uh, I'm jumping around a bit, but these are beautiful pho photographs that uh, Guy Hagen took. This is 120 Ellington Street East uh, from the beginning days of Burston Wells and Tampold. Uh, and uh, my dad actually owned a floor of this building. So when the building was built, the developer couldn't afford to build the building without selling the floors, so it was a syndicate that uh, owned the building. Uh, so that was an interesting way of building something. And this uh, is uh, 40 Gerard Street East. Uh, it's a giant precast concrete building. It's just interesting from a technological point of view that this was um, a, a period where these buildings were built in prefab uh, precast concrete, uh, it didn't last very long, but um, it's come back in a certain way. Um, these are the Holly Dunfield apartments uh, just south of Young and Eglinton. Uh, the, they were always very beautiful, the way these buildings were set in the, in the park. Um, Citadel Village, which I never really could understand uh, why they looked like this. It's sort of this a little bit of this Mediterranean look uh, with the arches, um, but I understand that the people who lived there absolutely loved living there, and they really enjoyed um, the, living in these townhouses. This is a senior citizen's residence on on Young Street. Um, this was a, it's an example of what my father always said: the building should have high foreheads. And that makes them look, look more intelligent if they have high foreheads. <laughs> and uh, Horseshoe Valley, we had free season uh, tickets, ski, ski passes when I was a kid because we were the, because my dad was the architect for, for Horseshoe Valley. I love the, I love the style of this, the sort of the, the roof shape is, um, Res reminiscent of uh, Eric Mendelssohn's uh, Dugendat Hat Museum, I think. Uh, just the, the the ideas he got from uh, international style architecture, I've always found fascinating. And uh, of course, the colonnade, which uh, my father always said that um, an architect is somebody with a client. So the he respected very much the fact that this was Gerald Robinson's client. Um, 
but when I look at the building and I, I study it, knowing my father's work, I can see now that the, the building was done, uh, the way I remember the story was that uh, they, they divided the building in half. And, um, but I can, knowing my father's work in, in Halifax and so on, I can see his trademark on this and that he really put it together because Gerald had a very, very small office. Uh, and uh, I think I can safely say that. Uh, including the staircase, which he was very proud of because it doesn't have any uh, post supporting it. This was um, interesting. My father and John were getting more and more into uh, wanting to become developers, and there's actually documents in the basement where they were uh, borrowing, they were negotiating borrowing $50 million dollars in uh, the early 70s to buy this corner. And I think they were going to put, I'm not sure about this, but they were going to put, I think, another student residence there. Um, and this is um, a sketch by Peter Sepp. And there's actually a series of these, five, uh, four or five of them, um, a beautiful freehand sort of gestural architectural sketches of what could be built next to the uh, next to the colonnade and uh, this I call to me is kind of the beginning of the end of uh, my dad's architectural career because it, they were getting more and more into owning property and becoming uh, small-scale developers and they built this for themselves so this was a uh, Nursewood House apartment at the base of Nursewood Street on Lake Ontario. And uh, we used to go there and pick the weeds. So my sister Anna and my mom Leda and I used to go there and uh, actually weed the gardens. But it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful Bauhaus square. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Yarmo. I, I should be mentioning dates more often, I know. <laughs> so, and, and, and this is uh, really the end. This is the last project that uh, my dad did, which was the house that my father and I designed together for my parents. Uh, so the, we worked on this uh, as soon as I graduated in 82, and we designed it together for about a year, and then the, the spade went in the ground. Um, in, uh, in 83, and uh, right now it's being renovated by uh, the new couple uh, and their architect, Richard Wangle, who I think is doing a pretty nice job um, of, uh, of renovating this, th this house. Um, I wanted to show the, the plans because I just think they're incredibly beautiful plans um, that we came up with together after, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of iterations. But they're very, it's very it looks very Corbusian, sort of villa-esque with uh, um, some alto, uh, I think, influence as well. The, the, it's interesting that the floors, each floor has a completely different character, even though the, the, out, the exterior shape of the building is somewhat the same. and the um, staircase. Uh, and this is the, finally the, the legacy. That's my, bill, my uh, house design that I did for the Mose family, if you remember the Mose Gallery in Toronto on the right and uh, 16 Maitre on the left. So it's interesting that uh, the style is somewhat similar. And uh, another picture of the same. And over there on the right, you can see a glimpse of my daughter, Evie's um, mosaic that she designed for the side of the uh, Moore's house. And uh, a recent project, uh, an another recent project of mine. And finally, the 
designed for uh, the addition to Tartu College, which we hope someday will be built. So thank you very much.